hopefully my slides will appear to talk about data science and the future of data science. Uh, my background is uh, in the computational modeling of individual and aggregate human behavior using data. So I guess I've been uh, analyzing data, mainly human behavioral data, for the past almost 25 years. So what is data science? I imagine all of you know what data science is. It's a discipline that has emerged in the past, I guess, 10, 15 years, which is at the intersection between math and statistics, computer science, and business and domain knowledge. It is a highly demanded profession. If we look at the jobs, according to LinkedIn, that had experienced the highest demand in the past years, we see that the top two are data science related jobs, and then number five is also a big data engineer, which is uh, very related to data science. Within data science, if the data is about people, uh, we have a new field called computational social sciences, which leverages large-scale aggregate human behavioral data to uh, corroborate or not um, social science theories, for example. And within computational social sciences, one area that I have been working on for the past 10 years is an area that we call data science for social good, where the goal is to leverage this large-scale data to help us make better decisions that will potentially save millions of lives in areas such as public health or financial inclusion or climate change or natural disasters or emergency relief. So as the name says, it's called data science, so I guess it needs data and it needs science, otherwise we wouldn't have data science. So if we look at data, uh, we know we are lucky because there is loads of amounts of data today. Uh, every year we say that we've generated more data than in the past 5,000 years you know, of humanity. And one could claim that data, but more importantly, the ability to make sense of this data is one of the mo most valuable assets of today's economy. If we look at the European Union, according to a report by the European Commission, the data economy next year will surpass 700 billion in the European Union. But data science also needs science. It's good to have the data, but I always say, if you don't know what to do with the data, the data is digital garbage. We need to be able to interpret that data, and we are talking about huge volumes of non-structured data, which is invisible to understand if it's not through the use of science or certain you know, areas within science, in particular data-driven machine learning. So we are also lucky on that front because in the past eight years or so, we have experienced an explosion of three factors that have contributed to um, a huge progress in data-driven machine learning. First of all, the availability of data, as I just said. Second of all, the availability of high-performance computing at affordable cost. And third of all, the development of a specific, sophisticated machine learning architectures that are able to uh, um, ingest all that data and make sense of it. And in particular, what we are experiencing today is the return of connectionism. So back in the 60s and 50s, one of the um, approaches or philosophies to achieve artificial intelligence was called connectionism uh, because it was inspired in biological learning and particularly in neural networks. So uh, the computational neural network was proposed, which was a very simple um, sort of like network with one layer, you have some inputs, you learn some weights that you apply on these inputs, and what you want is this neuron to have a desired output. This simple model was proven to be too simple to be able to do a lot of useful things and important things, but what has happened in the past eight years or so is that thanks to the availability of data and computation, we can extend this simple model into what is called deep learning, um, neural networks or deep learning more broadly, where we basically have very sophisticated, you know, uh, sort of like uh, networks like that with potentially hundreds of layers and hundreds of millions of parameters. And these deep neural networks are the ones that enable us to talk to our phones or to recognize you know, all sorts of uh, uh, elements in images and videos uh, and so forth. Something very important that has happened, because that wasn't like that when I started my research career, is that we are experiencing a democratization of data-driven machine learning. Today, there are loads of tools and libraries that create a level of abstraction such that you don't need to actually 
really you know, program all the equations uh, of your algorithms to be able to train them, because basically so it's mainly like building blocks. But of course, you need to know what you're doing. Otherwise, uh, it's kind of dangerous because you might be learning something completely meaningless. As I said, in the past eight years or so, we have experienced incredible achievements from you know, uh, a computer winning in Jeopardy to another computer uh, winning in Go, or you know, just a year ago, um, AlphaZero learning how to play chess and winning against the best chess player in the world, which we know is an algorithm, it's not a human. <laughs> but data-driven algorithms are not just great chess players or Jeopardy players. We live with data-driven algorithms, which decide for us many times and modulate our lives. So data-driven algorithms are the ones that you know, decide which friends we befriend and which updates from our friends we see or we knew which news we read, which books we read, which movies we watch, which music we listen to, which information we find, how we move around space. And more importantly, algorithms are increasingly defining which medical treatment is applied to us, which judicial sentence is given to us, whether we're given a credit or not, or whether we're given a job or not. So the realm of impact of data-driven algorithms in our lives is immense, and it's just going to get bigger. So I would say data science is not just data and science. We need much more than just data and science. Data science is extremely multidisciplinary. We need domain knowledge. We need multidisciplinary teams. We need to be able to communicate, present, and visualize what we're doing with the data, and we need ethics. And if we don't include all those pillars, I don't think data science will be, in general terms, good for us. I don't have the time to go in detail, but I'm hoping to just throw this here and maybe spur more discussion during these two days. There are six particular areas of improvement that we are working on, we meaning not just me, also the broader scientific community in computer science and data science, that I think are a must for us to address if we want data science to actually be positive. The first one is computational violations of privacy, and I won't explain them because I don't have the time, but I'll just throw them. The second one is bias, social exclusion, and discrimination. The third one is informational skills asymmetry. I said, oh yeah, there's lots of data, but it turns out that most of the data is privately held. Uh, so it's not really a very democratic process right now. Opacity and lack of transparency, veracity, and ethics. So just to conclude, I would say, the future of data science needs to include what I call fatent algorithms. And again, I don't have the time to explain, but I'll just go very quickly over the meaning of each of the letters in this acronym. The F for me is fairness. They need to have a sense of justice and non-discrimination, and also cooperation. As I mentioned, a lot of the data is privately held. The A is triple. It needs to preserve the human value of autonomy. There needs to be clear accountability. And I think the models should be augmenting our intelligence, not replacing our intelligence. The T is double. We need to be able to trust the systems that we use. And one way to achieve the trust is through transparency. The E is double. The first, and I'm cheating here, would be for beneficence. We need to make sure that the systems we design are maximizing the beneficence. Not every innovation is progress. And what we need to aim for is for progress not for innovation, for the sake of innovation. We need to make sure that we're doing it in a sustainable way, with diversity and veracity. And we need to invest in education at all levels. Education in our children and teenagers, education to professionals whose jobs are being disrupted by this new era of data-driven algorithms and AI, and education to decision makers and policy makers who many times decide on topics that they really don't understand. And finally, the N is for non-maleficence. Non-maleficence is different from beneficence. Non-maleficence means minimizing the negative aspects, ensuring that there is a certain level of reliability, security, reproducibility, prudence, and always preserving people's privacy. So, to sum up, the future of data science for me is having faith in algorithms, is always centering them in humans, and is investing in education. If you are interested in these topics, we have a number of articles where we des describe all these uh, concepts in more detail. And I just thank you for your attention. Terrific. Thank you.